take up your plasma incinerator and prepare to overcharge, because today we're talking Hell Blasters. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. In today's video we're going to be focusing on the Primaris with the huge plasma guns, talking tactics for the Primaris Hellblaster squad, with a look over their data sheet, talking about their damage output and overcharging, all the buffs and synergies to get more out of them on the table, and how they stack up against a couple of competitors. In the background the Hellblasters are made up of the Primaris finest marksmen, plugging away with incredibly accurate plasma fire, as they annihilate their foes with the power of the heart of a star. Supposedly in the lore they only overcharge their plasma guns in the direst of circumstances, as probably you don't want all that superhuman muscle get scorched by its own plasma gun, though I do suspect that the average Hellblaster squad when played on the table probably isn't quite so lucky in their commander's restraint. I'm not sure it's a squad that I'd like to serve in in a Primaris army. In any case, let's see what these guys can do on the tabletop with a look over their datasheet. So here we have the rules for the latest version of the Hellblaster squad. They're a heavy support choice for Codex Space Marines, and they cost you 33 points per model now, no matter which sort of plasma incinerator you equip them with. You can get really quite big squads of Hellblasters with anything up to 10 men, and each one is armed with a bolt pistol, plasma incinerator, and frag and crack grenades. They have pretty much the standard Primaris stat line, movement 6, toughness 4, 2 wounds, 2 attacks, and a 3 plus armor save. The biggest choice that you have to make with the Hellblaster squad is what sort of plasma incinerator to equip them with. All of them are basically variations on the same theme. They're all AP-4 weapons that gain 1 pip of damage and 1 pip of strength when you overcharge them. But of course, plasma being plasma, if you roll any unmodified hit rolls of 1, then the bearer is slain after you've made all the attacks. The standard plasma incinerator is 30 inch range, rapid fire 1. Strength 7, AP minus 4, damage 1, and it's really quite a big deal for overcharging it as you get to the very nice strength of 8 and damage 2. I think you really need to be getting in rapid fire range with this gun to make it effective though, otherwise you may as well have taken the heavy version. Talking of which, the heavy plasma incinerator is a 36 inch range weapon, it's heavy 1, strength 8, AP minus 4, and flat damage 2, and that's before you overcharge it. It means that they can be sitting at the back and they might not need to overcharge against quite a bunch of targets but if they're taking aim at some heavy armour, then they can overcharge for strength 9 and damage 3, becoming a genuine anti-tank weapon. Finally, and perhaps the most interesting loadout in my opinion, is the Assault Plasma Incinerator. This one's 24 inch range, Assault 3, Strength 6, AP-4, Damage 1, and when you overcharge it's Strength 7, AP-4, Damage 2. As we'll talk about in a second, this one has very good damage output, so kind of pays for it in a way by being extra easy to overheat, as of course you're throwing 3 dice, not 1. The only other option is for the sergeant to take a plasma pistol in addition to his plasma incinerator. It would cost you 5 points, and unfortunately it's a fairly pointless upgrade as you can't fire both. The only advantage is that you could potentially fire the plasma pistol in combat, though to be honest Hellblasters really don't want to be in combat in the first place, and if they are in combat they likely want to be falling back rather than sticking around trying to beat up the enemy with just their fists. I definitely treat it as a fluff upgrade, because it's not going to be doing much in game. They have the normal Angels of Death and Combat Squad special rules. Usually combat doctrines are really quite important for shooting units, but because the AP of the plasma incinerators is quite so high to start with, it very rarely matters whether they get it or not. The vast majority of things won't be getting an armour save anyway. Finally, in terms of keywords, they are infantry, core and primaris units, giving them access to quite a lot of stratagems and character synergies. In general, I'd say their role is an anti-elite infantry fire support squad, fairly expensive for their defensive profile so they really need to make themselves worth it in terms of the damage that they can do. So here we have a breakdown of the damage output of the different squads. For all these comparisons, I've assumed that they are overcharging, and they're getting the maximum number of shots that they can, so the standard Hellblasters are counting in rapid fire range, even though it might be a bit more of a struggle for them than the Assault or Heavy versions. In terms of raw damage output, it just basically isn't really a contest. The Assault Hellblasters win or at least draw every single category. Of course with the most shots they chew straight through light armoured targets such as guardsmen and don't even have to overcharge to be effective against them. They are only just ahead of the standard hellblasters against things like intercessors, do decently better against aggressors and toughness 7 vehicles, although against toughness 8 vehicles all the hellblasters are basically the same damage output. Basically if you are willing to overcharge then the assault hellblasters will do by far the most damage against most targets. Obviously raw damage output isn't the end of the story though. The Assault Hellblasters do have the biggest chance of dying from overcharging. 
If you overcharge the assault hell blasters without a sort of reroll one summer captain around, then it stands to reason you're going to lose quite a big chunk of your squad. Each model has a massive 43% chance of dying if there's no rerolls whatsoever. It basically means that you really need to pair them with a Space Marine Captain, as then that drops to only 8% chance. So say, out of 10 Hellblasters overcharging, you're on average likely to lose about 1. Other than that though, the Assault Hellblasters do have other decent benefits. They've got a good threat range, a 6 inch movement, and then 24 inches on top of that, means that they should be able to engage most things, and if they desperately needed some extra movement, you could even advance and shoot them. If you didn't overcharge, then they could be quite a decent counter-meta tool against things like Death Guard, Really, they're pretty much some of the ideal weapons for dealing with Plague Marines if you don't overcharge and just fire them at damage 1. It can be quite a good way of ignoring disgustingly resilient. I would argue that the standard Hellblasters have arguably the worst effective threat range. Sure, they can fire their one shot at 30 inches, but typically even non-overcharged Assault Hellblasters are going to beat you out at that range, meaning that you really need to plan to get within 15 inches for rapid fire if you want to make a good case for using the standard Hellblasters over the more fancy variants. If you are firing twice, you have a bit less chance of overcharging, of course. Only a 5% chance if you have reroll ones built in, or just under a 1 in 3 chance if you've got no rerolls at all. Finally, the heavy hail blasters are naturally going to be the best at really long range. They won't want to move, but they can strike out at 36 inches. And if you're targeting any elite infantry, they might often not even have to overcharge at all. Versus, say, Primaris Intercessors, it makes no difference whether they overcharge or not. If they are taking aim at a heavy tank though, they just have the standard 1 in 6 chance to die if you don't have rerolls, and it goes to vanishingly small if they do. To be honest, despite the increased risk, the Assault Hellblasters still are my favourite out of the three. Good mobility with a decent threat range, and very happy at shooting anything from light infantry to heavy tanks. So now let's talk briefly about buffs and synergy, and what sort of chapters might synergize well with the Hellblaster squads. Ultramarines do have a fair few decent buffing characters for synergy with big firepower units, but I think it's particularly quite useful that they have a built-in reroll 1 stratagem that you can use on any unit. 1 CP for negating a lot of dead Hellblasters is quite a good idea if they do get separated from a captain. Being able to fall back and shoot isn't a bad thing either. White Scars naturally synergize fairly well with the Assault Hellblasters. It means that they should have an absolutely excellent threat range as they can advance and shoot for no penalty at all. Raven Guard might be able to deliver them into battle a little bit easier, being able to put them in deep strike for just 1 CP, and when they get there they should be extra nasty to remove when in cover, either being minus 1 to hit or getting light cover when they're at long range. Iron Hands are a bit more durable, plus they work quite well with the heavy Hellblasters turn 1, they'll be able to move and shoot for no penalty, and also get native reroll 1s, always good if you're wanting to overcharge. Salamanders rerolling 1 wound roll a turn is pretty handy, plus they have a plus 1 to wound stratagem in Crucible of Battle. That one could be very good on the Assault Hellblasters and their relatively low strength. Imperial Fist can get a little bit of extra damage on those heavy Hellblasters if they need to. In theory, having damage 4 heavy Hellblasters turn 1 could be quite fun, plus the Tank Hunter's stratagem can be pretty good against hard targets. Space Wolves can potentially ignore modifiers with a stratagem. Dark Angels have a ton of synergy with plasma weapons, they can get plus 1 to hit if they're stationary with Grim Resolve, and for 2 CP, weapons from the Dark Age can give them an extra plus 1 damage, either having entirely safe overcharges, or getting your Assault Plasma Incinerators or Standard Plasma Incinerators all the way up to damage 3. Particularly nice for dealing with things like Gravis Armor or Terminators. Finally, Death Watch do have a fair few tricks. Their Hellblasters can have objectives secured by including them as part of a kill team, Again, they can deep strike them with their teleportarium, and they have quite a few stratagems for buffing infantry, and things for giving them 5 plus invuls or 5 plus feel no pains. Quite a lot of close range shooting competition though in the Death Watch army. I think that from this list between two very good damage buffs, Dark Angels are possibly the place where you'll get the most bang for your buck out of Hellblasters. Just in theory, if the stars aligned and you manage to have a squad of 10 assault Hellblasters, standing still in Dark Angels and using weapons of the Dark Age, you could put out an average of very nearly 40 wounds on toughness 7 vehicles. They do have the potential to hit very, very hard indeed. So moving on from chapters, there are plenty of other ways to buff them. As I said, in general combat doctrines aren't all that important. It's only going to matter at all if you've got anything that AP5 is actually going to be effective against. Things like Space Marines in light cover with no inbuilt saves to speak of. In terms of character support, naturally captains are pretty much the most essential thing to buy for Hellblasters. They buff the damage output, while also reducing the numbers of explodes results, kind of doubling down on the buff that he gives, and if I was running Hellblasters in any decent numbers, I'd certainly want a captain nearby. You could think about upgrading him to a chapter master, 
but bear in mind if you are re-rolling any 1s and 2s, they will actually make the chance of your explosions go up a bit, even if you do get far more damage. Otherwise, you can get other re-rolls such as from Lieutenants, Chaplain Litanies for plus 1 to hit or plus 1 to wound, Psychic Powers to make them more durable, and as is normal with Space Marines, Apothecaries work quite well with Elite Infantry, giving them their Feel No Pain type rolls for a bit of resilience against damage to weapons, and also healing them from the dead. Transport wise, you can think about putting them in an Impulsor or Repulsor. On paper, I feel like the Impulsor should be a good fit for Hellblasters. You can get it to move them very, very far, and then get out and still shoot at full effectiveness. It does pretty much guarantee you getting a very decent strike on the enemy troops. In reality, I don't tend to see that all that many people using Hellblasters in Impulsors. I think it might just be because they don't want to necessarily be really, really close to the enemy army, as they're just going to get shot down and charged if they are. Plus, Impulsors themselves are really quite pricey in terms of points, and it's hard just not to take a fair few more Hellblasters for the investment that that could bring. I'd say they're kind of take or leave for me, perhaps best if you want to run the standard Hellblasters, as they really want to be getting up close and into rapid fire range. In terms of stratagems, they do have quite a few options, though I think that the only ones that you're normally going to use are Transhuman Physiology and Orspet Scan. Transhuman is really quite efficient on anything Toughness 4, as they might have been wounded on 2s by various weapons already. An Auspex can can basically mean that your opponent just can't put any troops down anywhere near your Hellblasters unless they want them to be fried by Plasma Fire. In general, out of these, I'd say a Captain's near enough mandatory, which to be honest I would say is probably a weakness of the Hellblasters, as plenty of other units can function really quite well without support characters. Hellblasters just need him to keep them safe from their over and over charges. So how would I use Hellblasters in-game myself then? I think the two main alternatives are either to try and use them as a gun line for heavy support with those heavy Hellblasters, or to try and push them up the board as an anti-elite infantry unit using either the standard or assault variants. If I was using heavy Hellblasters, I'd hunker ideally in cover on a home field objective, try and avoid the opponent getting the first shot on them, even if it means setting up inside cover and then moving to engage them. Taking a minus one to hit penalty is better than just having your expensive squad dead. And then just chip away with heavy targets, anything with three wounds, or big vehicles with high armour saves. I think just unfortunately for heavy Hellblasters though, they're just not really all that efficient compared with some of the alternatives. Heavy Hellblasters are 33 points, or you could get Last Cannon Devastators as an alternative for that. They're the same number of points, have a greater range, and perhaps most importantly, don't try and overheat and kill themselves if they're not babysat by a captain. There's definitely positives and negatives versus flat damage 3 or d6 damage but it certainly makes those heavy Hellblasters a bit of a harder sell. The heavy versions also competing against things like Eradicators and Attack Bikes, very efficient multi-melter platforms, and they just don't stack up amazingly well numbers-wise against those. For me, if I was going to be using Hellblasters, I'd be far more tempted to use an aggressive squad of Assault Hellblasters, ideally starting on a board with a captain nearby, and ideally in cover or out of line of sight. If it did make sense though, you could think about strategic reserves, or using one of the deep strike reserve stratagems, such as Raven Guard or Death Watch. I quite like them, as they really have quite a lot of options. They have the option to advance if it makes more sense to them, and still be able to plug away with some Plasma Fire, and then each turn it can weigh up whether or not it's worth overcharging. Typically I would every single time that the damage 2 is effective, or if it's going to make a big difference to the wound roll, such as a toughness 6 or 7 targets. They really want to be getting the first strike rather than being shot down themselves, as defensively they're just not quite as tough as some of the other Space Marine units. But with such a big unit, they could be potentially very useful for increasing damage type stratagems, in particular things like the Salamanders plus one to wound, or Dark Angels weapons of the Dark Age. In Dark Angels, for example, even if they did move and don't get Grim Resolve, if your squad of 10 uses weapons of the Dark Age and still has Captain rerolls nearby, then you get about 30 wounds to a Toughness 7 vehicle. Provided they have enough viable targets, they could make their points back very quickly indeed. So how do the Assault Hellblasters stack up against some of their competitors, things like Eradicators or Plasma Inceptors? For anti-vehicle duties, they're actually really not all that far behind Eradicators in terms of points for the numbers of wounds on Toughness 7 vehicles. The Eradicators get 6.9 wounds per 100 points, versus 6 for the Assault Hellblasters. That is outside double tap melter range though, at 24 inches. Naturally, with so many more shots, the Assault Hellblasters are far better against infantry, and particularly against two wound infantry such as Intercessors. The Eradicators are quite a lot better at independent operating though, they don't need a captain to babysit them, they don't have the chance of blowing themselves up accidentally, and the Eradicators are point for point a lot tougher than the Assault Hellblasters, particularly against Strength 4 and Strength 5 attacks, where their Toughness 5 makes a big difference. 
I would certainly still say that Eradicator is likely to be the more competitive choice. But to be honest, in terms of raw numbers, I was surprised at just how close Assault Hellblasters get to them, particularly as they're a fair bit more flexible with killing light infantry. If you did really want to focus on plasma though, and you wanted to just deliver loads of plasma shots into the enemy, plasma inceptors might well be the way to go. You do get a fairly similar amount of plasma damage point for point, the plasma inceptors will be better against hordes and big units, due to their plasma weapons having the blast keyword, getting the automatic three shots against large units. Built-in deep strike and great movement is a really good boon on the plasma inceptors part. You are very likely to get the first strike with the plasma weapons, even if they do get cut down the next turn. I'd say their main weaknesses is that they have slightly worse durability, and the plasma inceptors are even riskier with overheating than the assault hellblasters. When you're losing 55 point models for every overheat, every single overheat loss is incredibly painful. Again, I would say in purely competitive terms, plasma inceptors are a bit more competitive than hellblasters, even with their recent points hike of 5 points. Again though, the gap is far narrower than it used to be. And I think that Assault Hellblasters could really work just fine in the right army, particularly if you have a captain nearby anyway. And I don't think that you're losing out massively compared with Eradicators or Plasma Inceptors, even if they aren't 100% optimal. So let me know what you think of the unit down in the comments below. There's certainly something fun about a whole squad of Space Marines turning up and frying the enemy with overcharged Plasma weapons. I think Hellblasters are always going to be a pretty popular community choice for that reason. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, but we'll certainly be keeping the 40k unit reviews coming, with plenty more videos each day. If you have been enjoying the channel, I would just like to mention one way that you can help support All Specs Tactics if you'd like to, which is my Element Games affiliate link, which you can find down in the video description. Element Games is a discount retailer based in the UK, and if you were thinking about buying any Warhammer models, whether they're Hellblasters or anything else, and if you order through them, a small amount of money goes to help support All Specs Tactics without costing you any more whatsoever. I've always found them very reliable, and they do give a good 10-20% off Games Workshop kits, so it can make the hobby just a little bit more economical. If you live in the USA or Canada, I do also have an Amazon affiliate link that works very similarly. Again, if you buy literally anything off Amazon after clicking on that, a small amount of money goes to help support the channel, while not costing you any more whatsoever. A massive thank you to you guys who have been using those links, it really does make a difference. In any case, a really big thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.